So the dinosaur of the day is Stenonicosaurus, which was a request from PaleoMike716 via our Patreon and Discord, so thank you. It was a troodontid theropod that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Alberta, Canada, founded the Dinosaur Park Formation. It was possibly also found in the Two Medicine Formation. It looked like other small theropods with the long tail. It was probably covered in feathers. It had that S-curved neck, short arms, long legs. And as a troodontid, it had the sickle-shaped claws on the second toes of each foot. Stenonicosaurus was estimated to be about 8.2 feet, 2.5 meters long, and weighs 77 pounds or 35 kilograms. It had long, slender legs, so it may have been a fast runner. The tail was flexible at the base, and that may have helped it turn while walking or running. And it had large eyes and binocular vision. It was able to grasp and hold objects. It possibly reached adult size between three and five years old, and that's based on a troodont found in two medicine formation. Stenonicosaurus was also possibly an omnivore, and its teeth were different compared to other theropods. It had jaws similar to an iguana's, and iguanas eat plants, and the teeth had large serrations. In 1988, Tom Holtz and Daniel Brinkman found that troodontid teeth had larger denticles than other theropods, and that the serration scaling is what made it so confusing on how to classify troodon when it was first described. Both Stenonicosaurus and troodon have been lumped and split in the past, mm-hmm. and troodon was named from a single tooth back in 1856, another reason why it's so confusing. That is very confusing. Yes. If you want to hear more about Troodon specifically, we did talk about it in episode 36. (laughs) It's been a while. It has been a while. So Holtz and Brinkman suggested that Troodon would have also eaten eggs and invertebrates, like worms, and others have suggested that Troodontids ate insects. The type and only species of Stenonicosaurus is Stenonicosaurus inequalis. The genus name means narrow claw lizard. It was named by Charles M. Sternberg in 1932, and he described a left foot, parts of a hand, and some tail vertebrae. When he was describing it, he wrote, quote, Observant collectors and students of vertebrate paleontology who have studied the Belly River and Edmonton faunas fully realize that, in spite of the many fine dinosaurian specimens which have been collected from these beds in recent years, many forms are still imperfectly known. Perhaps the light-limbed theropods are among the least known of these dinosaurs, end quote. Sternberg found that Stenonicosaurus closely resembled Ornitholestes, but Stenonicosaurus was bigger and had some differences in the tail and feet. He also wrote, quote, The structure of both the front and hind feet of Stenonicosaurus seems to suggest that it should be regarded as a direct descendant of Ornitholestes, though the difference in the caudal vertebrae might be against this suggestion, end quote. And he ended that there was a need to find more complete specimens or more fossils to learn more. Gotta find more fossils. Hashtag more fossils way before hashtags. <laughs> yeah. Or at least before they were used that way. Now, over the years, Stynonicosaurus has been reassigned and reclassified. Russell at one point synonymized Polyodontosaurus and Ornithomimus altus as Stynonicosaurus, but said that there wasn't enough evidence to synonymize them with Troodon. Carpenter later synonymized Polyodontosaurus, Stenonicosaurus, Ornithomimus altus, and Troodon formosus as Sorornithoides inequalis. And Phil Curry synonymized Stenonicosaurus and Pectinodon under Troodon formosus. Curry found that the differences in the teeth and jaws of Troodontids were based on age and position of the tooth in the jaw instead of being a feature of different species. So he reclassified Stenonicus as Troodon and reclassified other Troodontids as Troodon formosus. Although we're basing all this on just one tooth for Troodon, so... Yes. Although we keep hearing that there are more Troodon fossils out there, and they just haven't been published yet. Yeah. Or maybe it's this sort of thing where it's like, well, there are more Troodons. We've just called them by different names before. Mm. (laughs) Sounds like we're due for another paper. I think so. But later, other scientists, including Curry, thought that there might be more Troodonted species and they ended up splitting out dinosaur park formation fossils that used to be Stynonicosaurus as Troodon inequalis. In 2011, Lindsay Zana and others analyzed how Troodontids were classified and found all the specimens assigned to Troodon formosus were probably different species, and since the holotype of Troodon is a tooth, Troodon itself may be a nomum dubium, which is always strange when you've got a group of Troodontids 
Mm-hmm. But then the the animal it was named for, Troodon, might be not valid. Yeah. It wouldn't be the first time, but it is always unfortunate when that happens. Yes. In 2017, Evans and others agreed that the holotype of Troodon wasn't unique enough and suggested reviving Stanonychosaurus for troodonted fossils that were found in Dinosaur Park formation. Also in 2017, Aaron Van Der Reest and Phil Curry found Troodon formosus to no longer be valid. Oh, really? That's a big update since we did our Troodon Dinosaur of the Day, because I feel like Phil Curry was one of the ones that was really into Troodon back then. I think it's still an ongoing debate, though. Yeah. They studied a troodonted pelvis that Van der Reest had found in 2014 in Dinosaur Provincial Park, which led to him examining troodonted skull fossils. And that led to Van der Reest and Curry resurrecting Stanonychosaurus inequalis and naming Latinovenetrix McMaster. They reassigned a lot of the Stanonychosaurus fossils to the new dinosaur, Latinovenetrix. And we covered that as a news item in episode 144. So we might have talked about what they found with Troodon back then, too. Yeah. There are definitely a lot of Troodon fans out there, though. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They also talked about how it seemed unlikely for all those fossils to belong to Troodon because that would mean that Troodon spanned 15 million years and has been found in what is now Mexico all the way up to what's now Alaska. (laughs) That is a very long time and a long range for one genus. Yes. Then in 2021, a study by Thomas Cohen and others found that Latin Venetrix was actually a junior synonym to Stenonychosaurus. So that was a short-lived dinosaur. The differences in features were due to individual variation. So a lot of lumping and splitting still happening up until pretty recently. Yeah, with such fragmentary dinosaurs, (laughs) if people are studying them, there's a lot of room for interpretation. Yes. All right, now the for the part that we've been teasing for a while. So in 1969, Dale Russell described a more complete Stenonychosaurus skeleton, and this skeleton was the basis for a life-size sculpture of Stenonychosaurus and a sculpture of the famous, or maybe infamous, dinosauroid. Yeah. Infamous is probably the better word. <laughs> <laughs> In 1982, Russell and Seguin did a thought experiment on what Stenonychosaurus would look like if it had continued evolving until today. And they wrote, quote, Stenonychosaurus was a highly progressive animal for its day. And they also said, quote, it might also be entertaining to speculate in a qualitative manner on how the descendants of Stenonychosaurus inequalis might have appeared had they survived the terminal Mesozoic extinctions, end quote, and if they evolved to have an EQ similar to humans. That's the encephalization quotient. They said that over time, the EQ relative to brain weight compared to body weight in dinosaurs increased. And they found that while a troodontid skull had a low EQ compared to a human, it was a lot higher compared to other dinosaurs. It had a large brain. So they're basically like taking a trend line of, look, they're getting smarter and just extrapolating it way out millions of years of evolution tens of millions of years yeah (laughs) yeah so they suggested hey if stenonychosaurus have kept evolving until today it could have an eq similar to a human's they also thought this is where we get into the dinosauroidiness of it that the large brain would lead to it having evolving to have a shorter face and eventually being toothless and having a short neck to support this larger brain And then eventually it would walk like a human and have a partially opposed finger on each hand. And that's based on the fact that Stenonychosaurus could grasp. Being upright would also mean no more tail or maybe just a stump of a tail. So this dinosauroid looked very human-like. If you search online for images, I think it looks like a sci-fi alien with the large eyes. Very much a little green man looking thing. Yeah. You can't look at it and think anything other than they started with a person and made it look like a dinosaur rather than starting with a dinosaur and using like principles of evolution to come up with the most likely scenario. Well, it's funny you bring that up because that's exactly what they said. They argued humans have the best body shape for our big brains. So that's why Stenonychosaurus would potentially evolve to look more human, but they did allow that they might be biased. I mean, dolphins and whales have way bigger brains, so why not argue that dinosaurs would have evolved to be 
aquatic because we know a lot of dinosaurs did become aquatic mm, so shouldn't they point. just be like weird dinosaur dolphins <laughs> or something <laughs> i think they were kind of just having fun with this i think so too they said it was a thought experiment and mm-hmm. i think it was meant to provoke discussion which it has led to many discussions we're still talking about it like 40 years later yeah they also imagined that the dinosauroid would give live birth instead of laying eggs because it's got the larger brain power, or, you know, to give it the larger brain power, the larger brains and heads like humans, and they imagined it would feed the baby's regurgitated food. They ended their paper with, quote, The presence of this body form in Homo sapiens demonstrates that the solution exists. It may, however, not be unique. We invite our colleagues to identify alternate solutions, end quote. So, yeah, exactly. They wanted people talking about this. Now, this thought experiment has had a lot of criticisms, <laughs> as you might imagine. <laughs> a lot say the dinosauroid is just too human-like. Some scientists have said that if Stenonicosaurus had kept evolving, it would keep its theropod body and be more horizontal than vertical with a long tail. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good assumption considering theropods evolved for like 160 million years, and they all stayed pretty horizontal. Some of them got a little bit more upright, like a Dinochirus or Therizinosaurus or something, but they all still had the tail and everything. Mm -hmm. Saying that another 50, 60 million years, they would have gone fully vertical is a weird stretch. I guess you could also look at birds today. Most birds, I guess they could go kind of upright if they wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, but you're right. Even in the case of birds, which do basically have no tail left, Mm -hmm. they more or less walk horizontally or nearly horizontally. And they still lay eggs. Yeah. (laughs) They did lose the teeth, though. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. So, yeah, some of those things happened. They might just be combining bird evolution with human evolution, though. And getting to the lack of teeth thing. Isn't that the fun with thought experiments, though? Yeah. Could go anywhere. I think the the main criticism from it is sort of like the T-Rex being a scavenger. Mm -hmm. It's not always clear that it's a sort of tongue-in-cheek, a little bit thought experiment. Sometimes it seems like a more serious proposal, Mm -hmm. especially because there was a documentary watched from the 80s where they had the dinosauroid and they were like, this is what we think it would have looked like. Right. Not like, here's one very remote possible idea and wouldn't it be funny if this happened yeah it seemed more like a serious consideration my guess is this thought experiment took off because they had their illustrations Mm -hmm. and the actual model of it yeah (laughs) yeah it's just like today with if you have good paleo art to go with it people it really draws attention is the dinosauroid good paleo art (laughs) <laughs> I mostly mean like colorful and available. <laughs> eye-catching. Yeah, eye-catching. <laughs> now, it's possible that there are eggs and nests found in the two medicine formation in Montana that belong to Stenonicosaurus, which is why I said it might also be in Montana. But these eggs and nests have been thought to be Orodromaeus, then later Troodon, and then Van Der and Curry said, well, maybe it's Stenonicosaurus. Stinonychosaurus lived on a warm coastal floodplain that was covered by forests. Also known as a swamp. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the way I think about swamps has changed now mm-hmm. since prehistoric planet. And other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place as Stinonychosaurus include Displetosaurus, Gorgosaurus, Lambiosaurus, Carithosaurus, Procerolophus, Styracosaurus, Centrosaurus, Chasmosaurus, Edmontonia, Stegoceras, and foraminocephaly. And euoplocephalus. Oh, yes. Forgot one. And that's a wide range of different types of dinosaurs. Was that ceratopsians and chylosaurs? Of course, theropods. Hadrosaurs. Yep. Tyrannosaur. Oh, yeah. You're, <laughs> you're getting more specific for me. I said theropods. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So that is Stinonychosaurus in a nutshell and the dinosauroid. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash inodino or click the link on the left. 